It's your go-to place for <laughs> entertaining car talk, the In Will Time Car Talk Show. Just ahead, it's a cameo appearance by the Lilienthal right. Mercedes and Andy with fun car news from the Pacific Northwest. Jeff has a feature, concept cars. Mm -hmm. Where did they go? We'll look. Plus, we'll have the stories making automotive news headlines along with Conrad's Car Clinic all straight ahead on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong. We need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Thanks for joining us today. It's going to be another hot one here in Houston. You bet. Hot. Hot, baby. hot, 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 hot like sweaty, me. yeah, stinky. What ninety-seven today or something yeah. like that? Yeah, and eighty-five percent humidity. <clears throat> yeah, so come on down. You sweat taking a cold shower. I know, but your skin looks beautiful. <laughs> your hair is a little moist. <clears throat> yeah, well, there's that. <clears throat> We're waiting for the Lilienthal's to punch in. They should be here momentarily. They usually are, and uh, once they arrive, then we will be cutting to them out on the left coast. We assume that they are out there. That's where they that's where they normally live, but you never know where they'll be. Well I got a little more bit more information on the next generation Mustang if you want to I do chat yeah. about uh, it. Yeah so we in, uh, in an earlier segment of the show <clears throat> we were talking about the Mustang and kind of disappointing um, the overall thing. I mean they, they've changed even the, the visuals of the car. Huh? Even the visuals of the car people. But it, I mean, it's just it. What what's cutting edge about it? What's different about it? What makes it nothing? I mean, they could have done that with just an update to the to the grill. Yeah. Didn't, it, didn't they make some changes to the motor or something? They were well. The uh, the base motor now in a Mustang is the two point three liter EcoBoost uh, engine. And uh, it's got a dual fuel system, so it's got both gasoline direct injection and port fuel injected engines. So that four cylinder has eight fuel injectors on it. Um, and it's got a twin scroll turbocharger. Uh, that's going to be the base engine. There is no longer, and that, I think it's like 330 horsepower. I was going to say, it's, it's, it's uh, pretty powerful. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's no longer a V6 available. Good. The next step up is the 5 liter V8 uh, in its fourth generation version of the Coyote, now sporting a dual throttle body intake system fed by uh, opening on either side of the grill, uh, giving it a cold air uh, um, induction system. Uh, Ford isn't providing numbers for either engine yet, but uh, the EcoBoost, they're assuming, is about 330 horsepower. And the Mustang, the, excuse me, the uh, Coyote V8, they're, the guess is somewhere around 480 horsepower, which can be pretty... Pretty Stop. fun to pretty yeah. fun to drive. Right. Transmissions are going to be a carryover with a standard six-speed with uh, auto rev match functionality from Getrag and Ford's ten-speed automatic. The two transmissions available uh, with the automatic cars. The uh, Ford is offering a feature called remote rev. Just what you want is some kid with a hot rod Mustang and that empty hollow exhaust system that so many of them have and he can sit there with his key fob and rev the engine nice <laughs> not i tell you I tell you i've seen two things recently that just blew my mind with the mustangs there was a late model white snow white gt mustang came through town i saw it two days ago with white spoke wheels on it it was the ugliest thing i ever saw the big 20s you know i mean it was it was terrible. So it was a, a look like a, wagon, a wheels. verge of a donk. Yeah, yeah, it was trying to be. And the other thing yeah, I it saw wasn't that so much. It was the color of the, yeah, wheel. the yeah. white. Yeah, it just looked terrible. Yeah. And the other thing I saw that uh, I was really disappointed in. He came up. My wife and I were in the car, and she saw it too. He said the same thing. Kid comes by us. Kid, dark tinted windows, black Mustang, drop down, pretty new Mustang. And on the license plate, it said uh, J Wick. Okay. So you want to be cool, John Wick. But he had taken, you know, the three taillight section, each one of the taillights, so it could have the sequential. He'd taken that out and put one big round one in it. Oh, how odd is that? And it looked so ugly. And it was, I mean, it is like, what well, have you that, done? That's all he had. He didn't have triangle ones. So he had the round ones. He <laughs> put those in there. Yeah, that you bought it. That you bought at High Low Auto Supply or a, uh, you know, for feed, a trailer or feed a truck. store from uh, a farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was bolt on. It yeah. was. It was terrible. Or JC Whitney. And and there Ford is bringing the performance back as well on both the EcoBoost and the GT, and that's going to bring a strut tower brace. 
torsion limited slip differential. Now, torsion limited slip is pretty high-tech stuff that is the same type of limited slip that was in the Hummer H1, um, as well as some, some race cars. It's not the limited slip you think. Very, very high-tech stuff that they're putting in it. It's all uh, computer controlled. No, no, no. It's, it's all mechanical. It's worm gears and stuff. It's really pretty cool. Seriously? Yeah, it's really, really pretty high-tech. Uh, so they're bringing in the torsion limited slip. They're going to stagger the tire sizes so you can't rotate your tires. I Personally, I don't like that, but it's also going to have a bigger set of Brembo brakes with a Magna Ride dampeners on it. Now, who are they buying Magna Ride from? I guess GM. It's the only one who, mm -hmm. they're, they're the ones who have it uh, licensed. So, and GM sells that Magna Ride now, I guess, to Ford as well as to Ferrari. Um, sure does work good. Oh, it, it does. And then the on the GT, it's going to have the Brembo is going to have six piston Brembos up front and four pistons in the back. Um, the S650 models can also come with an electronic drift brake, which progressively locks the rear wheels uh, by themselves without putting any brake pressure on the front depending on how far the driver pulls the drift handle. So basically, you're going to have an 18-year-old kid with a drift stick inside of his Mustang. Like leaving a meat and crashing a Mustang isn't easy enough to do all by <laughs> itself. Now, now they're going to offer a drift stick they're gonna help you. to start applying the brakes. It's just for help. I'd like to try that. that Mustang, I used to have one on my doom buggy. That Mustang that I was uh, telling you about that... Uh, John Gray has over at Gulf Coast Auto Shield. We had it this week. They're tinting the windows on it. Brand new. With the carbon fiber wheels. Mm -hmm. It had Brembo's on it. These things were massive. <laughs> huge. With huge rotors behind I was going to say, the rotor's got to be huge, too. I, I, I've never seen a brake that big on any car. Drilled and slotted rotors? Oh, all of that. Yeah. And, yeah. And massive. And this is from the fact that this is a brand oh, yeah. spanking new car. I'm going, wow, look at that. Well, you got to think that's probably pushing 600-plus horsepower. Oh, at least. With a set of tires that are going to grip. I think it's almost, it's close to 700, is it? Isn't yeah, it? I, I don't know off the top of my head. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it, was, it wasn't close to 700. So with massive tires that are going to grip, so you got to have a brake system that's going to work proportionally well, and to plus it. Plus the cooling. I mean, obviously, if you're going to ride the, the brakes pretty hard in the, going to the carbon, corners, you're going to yeah. get them to cool down. Those carbon fiber wheels. I want those. <laughs> and, and, until you scratch. Wow. Until you scratch clip a curb. One. Yeah, clip a curb. Yeah, I'd break it. And I'm <laughs> sure those wheels are, you know, $2,000 Why would you even say that? Least, if you yeah. got those wheels, you're going to stay away from curbs. You're going to well, be yeah. very, very conscious Not when of you're using wheels. your drift stick. Well, that's leaving, true, yeah. Leaving a meat somewhere, <laughs> and you I just kind of rip the right side this wheels was off. I don't think that this was... I don't think that this was the new new Mustang because I don't mm. think it's out yet. Mm -mm. But uh, it was the I had it been a twenty two model. New enough. Wow, man, it was beautiful on the inside. I mean, just everything about it. I, I was, I was impressed. Yeah. Well, me personally, I like the current. I like the look of the current generation Mustang. The new one, it looks like they tried to slick it up too much. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not real sure they. They did it. They tried right. to really, well. The they were trying to make it different, but I I think that they went the wrong way. Yes. Well, I I agree. I think what they should have, my, me personally, what they should have done was they should have made like the change that happened in the '69 and '70 Shelby's, that the way that front end kind of had a cove. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been a better design change than still keeping it look like a '68 and '69 Mustang. Evolution, yeah, because this to me it just it, it, they kind of they narrowed that grill opening and stuff. It remind, reminds me of what the Charger did, you know that whole front oh, yeah, end just yeah, kind of yeah. they kind of brought it, it down yeah, a shrunk lot it up. smaller, and it just, and they also shrunk the back of it to make the tail lights smaller. Well, the tail lights are the ones that are in the Mach E Mustang. Okay, so they oh, put round they? ones. Okay. Yeah, put it the round looks ones like them. There. I don't know whether they're interchangeable or not, but that's what's back there. I bet they are. Well, yeah, they, they, well, it makes sense. You got a parts bin. Well, I guess. But I, I just don't. There are some things that auto manufacturers do that puzzle me. Some of them are brilliant. Other ones, not so much. And other th make you go, who should get <laughs> fired for this? Because <laughs> somebody should get fired. Well, yeah. it goes to committee. You can't, it's just not one well, guy going to do it. Not only that, but from what I have learned doing this for now for 20 years, it's like, okay, they go and they have uh, – Basically, they bring in people from the outside. Tell us what you think of that. Mm -hmm. Mm 
So they have focus groups mm -hmm. that basically give them an idea of what general public would like or not like. And they go out and they buy competitive cars and disassemble those to yep. see what features they like of those that they might want to add onto their next car. Yeah. You know. I, 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 some of the things that they do you st you, that you don't understand. Why would you override what people really want and do it your way and you think that your way is better and then they wind up falling flat on their right. face and well, they don't sell any that it doesn't resonate with the people. Went to uh, Detroit one time and uh, Chevrolet, their new trucks that particular year, went to this big movie studio. They had bleacher set up, had it blocked off for the international press and all this stuff. And so they're making this big deal and they open up the curtain and here's these two trucks. And everybody's going, uh, okay. Nothing. And, and, and that, you know, it, but they, that's when they put the step bumper in. That was their big claim to fame on that truck because they knew what their customers wanted, and this is the truck their customers wanted. It looked just like the year before. Mm -hmm. But it had a step. But the it bumper. had the step butcher that they took off the avalanche and put in there. So, you know, we've talked about this in the past. Ford is uh, ending a job relationship with a little over 3,000 employees uh, as they're transitioning to EVs. Um, and that's been in the media quite a bit. Well, the most recent piece is Ford is increasing the size of the salaried workforce as they're transitioning to EVs. Well, imagine that. <laughs> Golly. Which, which, which was my biggest pet peeve with General Motors is every time they would trim the workforce, they would trim the workforce in the people who are facing the customer and dealing with the customer on a day-to-day -day basis while they would keep all of those people who made those decisions would all get raises and promotions yeah. and stuff, and, and they didn't really face the customer. Well, Ford is also uh, shuffling. I, I didn't even print the story because nobody would really care, but they're shuffling a lot of high executives at Ford. They just announced that this mm -hmm, week. Mm -hmm. Some of them are being let go. Others are moving around to different positions. They're trying to position themselves, and I understand this, for the electric thing and trying to get all of the ducks in a row with that. But then they go out and then they buy a huge, what was it that they bought? A huge chunk of land was it, uh, I think I sent you a link to it. It was the old American Motors building in Detroit and all the property that goes around it. So obviously there are things that they're doing that are not public yet mm -hmm. that we don't quite understand, but they're spending billions of oh, dollars yeah. billions billions and, and and some of the spending whether it's uh, general motors stellantis ford toyota honda they're spending billions of dollars on battery technology yes and, and, and plants and plants to produce these new batteries the problem with it is all of those special metals that can, that go in those yeah. batteries Strip mining. they don't they don't uh, they're not produced here in the United mm -hmm. States. They're produced elsewhere. Remember, we had the guy on with Cobalt. Uh, with the mining company mm -hmm. yep. in Spain. And he was he was complaining about how the Chinese have been buying up all of these mines elsewhere around the world uh, in Africa and stuff to uh, mine all of those special metals needed mm -hmm. for batteries. Well, the uh, Chinese Oops, are... Oops, did it again. Yeah. Um, and matter of fact, while we've got the chance, I'm going to read this story. <clears throat> China... Joined in the criticism of the new U.S. law providing tax breaks for electric vehicles, threatening unspecified action if needed to protect its interests from a law it says is discriminatory. Oh. <laughs> the clause in the Inflation Reduction Act ruling out Which tax... doesn't reduce inflation, by the way. The clause in the Inflation Reduction Act ruling out tax breaks for vehicles assembled abroad, quote discriminates against similar imported goods and is a suspected breach of the World Trade Organization principles. According to Xu Juting, spokesperson for the Ministry of Commerce uh, in China, and said during, he said during a Thursday briefing, China will continue to assess and evaluate implementation of the legislation and will take measures to safeguard its legal interests when necessary, she added, without providing details. The comments added the criticism from the European Union and South Korea over the law, which says that cars will not be eligible for up to $7,500 in subsidies if critical battery components come from China, 
Russia, and other foreign entities of concern. Much of the world's battery supply chain is reliant on China, which is home to some of the world's largest battery giants, including Tesla supplier, contemporary Amperex Technology Company. Yeah, and who would know more about breaking the rules at the WTO than China? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know how well that worked out with the COVID vaccinations and things, yeah. products. But <clears throat> we've sent everything over to China. and Because it was cheaper. <clears throat> Slave labor is a lot cheaper than, than union labor. And where has that left us? In, in deep doo-doo. Even yep. our fire drills. Even our fire drill. Chinese fire drill. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. They don't have those anymore. They used to. Yeah. We we participated. We in oh yeah. Them. We were get out of the car, run around the car. The light if, turns if I tried green. to do that now, the light would change three times before he got all the way around the car. Before he got out of the car, <laughs> I'd have to stop and pee. <laughs> That's it. Change that diaper while you're out. There you go. Mm -hmm. So uh, you want to do uh, racing? Um, I don't know. Do we? Yes, we do. So NHRA this weekend is at Z-Max Dragway in Eric Charlotte. Eric is qualified number one. P1. Provisional. Yeah. P1. Provisional. And well, for ground, round one. And she qualified. took last, last race. She won That's last right. race. Yep. And then our, another friend of the show, Antron Brown in Top Fuel, he's a qualified P6. And he's been on a run lately. You mm -hmm. know, Antron's been, been doing he's well. He's straightening out some things. Well, he's getting the team together. Yeah, exactly. You know? Getting the band back together. And then uh, next weekend, uh, NHRA is going to be in St. Louis. The weekend after that, they're going to be up in Ennis. And then the finale is October 27th through the 30th in Las Vegas. NASCAR tonight. Uh, not tonight. NASCAR is in uh, uh, Texas uh, this weekend. Uh, and then on the, t on the 2nd, they're going to be in Talladega. On the 9th, they're going to be in Charlotte. On the 16th, they're going to be in Las Vegas. And then on the 23rd in Homestead, and I think that's the final race. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching portions of the drag race, uh, wherever it was last week. <clears throat> and they made a, NHRA made a big deal, a, a press release. Sold out crowd. Are you kidding me? Where were They may have sold every seat, but the people weren't in the seats. In the seats. It was mm -hmm. clearly. On Sunday. And that is that is a big thing that seems to be inching its way through every racetrack. Yeah, NASCAR. Oh, big race here at uh, Z Max or wherever yeah. it is. No, well, you, there's uh, nobody there. You know, uh, Texas World Speedway. Um, generally, I mean, when I was going back, you know, back in the 2000 2014 range. Well, no, I guess 2090s and 2000s. The the uh, grandstand on the back straight was full of people. They don't even open that anymore. Everything's all on the front mm -hmm. front grandstand. And it's stands, a small and, section by and the they don't fill start it, finish line. They don't line. fill it in yeah. anymore either. So they, they're losing. And that's revenue. I believe that's revenue to the track, not revenue to NASCAR. I think NASCAR's revenue is all driven off of TV and stuff. But the track and the promoter, they're not getting, they're not getting the turnout that they want. Part of it's probably because the tickets are 100 bucks a piece. Well, but. that and the fact, the format and, and the egos and the ego the jerk wads <laughs> that are on there today. I mean, really? Well, speaking of egos and jerk wads, Jeff's favorite thing <laughs> is la, Formula la, One. La, 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 la. Uh, Singapore Grand Prix is next weekend. Then on the 9th is the Japanese Grand Prix. And then October 23rd is a Circuit of the America for the U.S. Grand Prix. And then on the 30th, they're going to go to Mexico. And then on the uh, November 13th, they're going to do Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil. And then on uh, November 20th, Abu Dhabi. And I think that's the finale. Uh, next weekend is the finale for IMSA Road Racing. And that will be the end of the DPI era right. of the prototypes. So there will be a, some pretty cool cars for sale after next weekend. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Cadillacs have... Why well, have to uh, look into that? By the way, I want you to know that I was talking to Stan... And uh, he's pretty much given us carte blanche to any of the cars that he has <clears throat> in his collection uh, to be inside uh, our booth at Autorama this oh, year. Very nice. I want the white Bentley with the red leather interior. That uh, one, that's not one of them. <laughs> that's Sheila's that's, car. That's not in the stable. <laughs> but uh, so I, th I think it's really between the Woody or the 38 Buick. 
that my daughter used in her marriage, uh, you know, the drive away mm -hmm. thing. Yep. That was a stunning, beautiful car. Black 38 Buick. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Ooh. We'd have to have something to wipe it, keep it wiped down. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll handle that. Hire somebody. <clears throat> we'll, we'll handle that. But, um, yeah. So, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm still a fan of the uh, black and white Ranchero. I think that's a beautiful car. Yeah, it is. You, because, is that the one you want? Yeah, because that, that is, to what is me. Was that a 58? 58. It's an extremely unusual car because it's a one-year-only body style, and it, it's not something you see very many Will of. it fit in the booth? Yeah. Will the Buick fit in the booth? I don't know. Uh, me either. <clears throat> you know, it's got that squared off back end with the little bustle butt on it. Yep. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I wouldn't think it'd be much longer, if any longer, than the truck we had last year. I don't know. That, that was truck a short, was a, yeah, it was a short truck. Well, short, a short, short bed, regular wheel. cab, but still. Um, I don't know. We'll squeeze it in there somehow. Sure. So. We, if way, we haven't decided on the car, my vote would be the El, the black and white El Camino. Okay, so let's remember that. So and remind me, and I'll tell Stan because my vote doesn't want. count. It's all about Don. Everything's always well, about it's not. Don. I, I uh, haven't true. seen all the stands. I've seen the, the red Chero, and I've seen the uh, Woody that he had out there. The, the, the Woody was gorgeous. Though. Yes, I'll, it was. I'll give you that. That Woody was but it stunning. Was, uh, you see a lot of Woodies. I mean, uh, not a lot, but when you see them, yeah, okay, I've seen them, and. Uh, You'd rather have the Ranchero. Ranchero it is. Well, and, but I don't – I mean, the only thing I've seen of the other one was the, the pictures that you put on about your, your daughter's wedding, and you didn't really see much of the car there. So I don't – The, and the Buick's nice a cool car because the Buick has got that gangster look. Total gangster look and the fact that Stan bought it out of a museum. So it is to the ten, teens. I mean, it looks like it rolled better than it rolled off the factory showroom floor. So do we enter it in the show or just bring it and display it? Because didn't we enter the truck last yeah. year? Yeah, Dwayne, he, Dwayne, he, he won. Truck. Dwayne won. We just had him in our in Well, our I think that that would, be, that would be a good th I don't know. I haven't seen the Ranchero, but knowing Stan, it's probably perfect. And, and <clears throat> will Dwayne be at Woody's this year? I don't know. Well, that's where we connected yeah, I know. with that's him That's where we connected year. to. So he may, we may bump into him. Yeah, let's yeah. do uh, Jeff's concept cars, okay. and let me just say this about that. You know, back before I got into all of this, and, and, and what was it, two thousand, somewhere around there, ninety nine, two thousand. <clears throat> I was always a car guy, and I always went to the new car show, the Houston Auto Show, as it were, and I followed that thing around since its inception mm -hmm. at the Astro Hall. Remember those days? Yeah, well, that was way back when. <laughs> and. There was always a concept, several concept cars. From different manufacturers. From the big manufacturers, basically the Detroit mm -hmm. Three. And some of them, they had a couple of concept cars. You never see a concept car anywhere, anymore, ever. Well, you're going to see some here, and these are yeah, the, the, the you new see versions. see anything now, the, the last time I've seen any, it was at the Detroit Auto Show, pre-COVID. But it really what it was, it wasn't like a concept car like what we grew up. It was like, okay, we're thinking about building this. And uh, if we get the right reaction, we build it. Concept cars, you know, used to be like dream cars. and, and Yeah, just, like Motorama. Kind yeah, of stuff. yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and, and, but the ones they do now, if they do them, is basically a precursor to a production and car. And there is your lead in, There Jeffrey. are a bunch out there. I just selected a few, uh, the ones that tickled my fancy. Uh, Conrad, I'm going to let you do this. All you have to do is push this button here. Okay, you go. Do the space go. bar. So what we see, uh, this is a, Su a Suzuki, uh, and it's called a, a Hanair, H-A-N-A-R-E. Ever wanted to own a home on wheels? It drove itself. Well, Suzuki has designed one. The word Hanair means dis detached cottage in Japanese, and that's not it. You went too fast, uh, I, but that's well. okay. It's autonomous, and uh, it's a little bit different. No steering wheel. There's no driver's seat, and it has an uh, interior like a living room that you can adjust the furniture in. Now, it attracted me to that vehicle like a moth to light or to Conrad to an Oldsmobile. So it, it, well, because you're a minivan guy yeah. and, a, and a station wagon guy. Right, right. So, And then the, the next one is a Hyundai Vision T plug-in. Uh, the T is a slightly bigger hybrid version. 
that could lean toward the Hyundai Tucson. Not much has been revealed in terms of specs for the concept. Hyundai showcased this particular concept vehicle uh, where to show where the company is headed in its future. Some nifty aesthetics, including fancy light sequence with very large but intriguing wheels. Uh, the next one is an Aston Martin Long, uh, Lagonda. It's an all-terrain. Spell that, Mike. Lagonda. L-A-G-A-N-D-A. You got it. Which is a name of their past. Right. Lagonda, uh, it's estimated to hit the markets in 2022, but for now it's still a concept. So good luck finding it. They all look the same. These are all SUVs that, just like everything else, they all look the same. And the other thread of this is they're all electric. SUV stands for suppository unit. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> vehicle. Utility uh, vehicle. Because they all slip through the air. The, the luxury crossover uh, just meant for the posh and Uterine premier. Uh, but those who like it, uh, it's edgy and on the wild side. Me or you? <laughs> the exterior design looks something like you'll find on the set of Alien and Predator. The protruding backside and the inside is uh, protruding backside and the inside is the mi minimalistic. Uh, the Lagonda. Did you read this before I did, you? I did. I'm just trying to hurry. <laughs> Why? <laughs> he just can't read it now. Yeah. No, it, he tried to Lagonda, avoid the, the no matter what shape this vehicle takes, it's only in the electric brand. 300 miles. That's all you get out of it, Mike. So okay. you wouldn't be able to do that. Looks like one of a moon rover or something. Yep. And the next. Yeah, see, I knew it. Uh, is the Genesis Essentia. No, I like a, that. It's a sports car made classy. It needs to be orange. It is also electric. Uh, it's a good-looking sports car. The concept is complete. The driver uh, in the world around it, inside, is, is so conceptual. There's really no pictures of it at all. Uh, so you have to kind of have you got to kind of dream about what it. it is what is that? What's the emblem on the Just, hood? But whatever. It's a Genesis. Oh, that's a Genesis. And, oh. Yeah, and the last one the uh, is a hand. Honda Sports EV, beautifully crafted. It's the Sports EV. Uh, there's also a Honda E, which sort of looks like the Mustang that Mike was talking about earlier with the round lights. Though the original concept of this vehicle had a deep hood design, Honda is expecting to make small space, shallow compartment to carry a bit more in the passenger side of it. Not necessarily. <laughs> it looks Honda. like a Mustang. Yeah. It kind of looks like a cross between the old uh, Toyota S2000 and a Mustang. It's only going to be available in Europe and Asia. Good. That's, that's where they need Good to place keep it. For the it. In Wheel Time Car Talk Show streams on Me. the iHeart app. Facebook, YouTube, and InWillTime.com. Podcasts are available from your favorite podcast channel. In Will Time Car Talk Show continues after this quick break. Starting to work on your Christmas calendar? Be sure to add the next Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise In Saturday, December 17th. You'll want to attend Tailpipes and Tacos Christmas Edition at the Loopy Tortilla in Katy, 8 to 11 a.m. It's the only place cruisers compete for Loopy's Chili Pepper trophies and other prizes. There's no charge to enter your vehicle for Best Hot Rod, Best Classic, or Best Modern Classic. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's coolest and most unique cruise-in and is your opportunity to see the best hot rods, show cars, classics, and resto mods and get Loopy Tortilla breakfast tacos with adult beverages. There's no entry fee and cars will automatically compete for those much sought-after custom Loopy trophies and other prizes. It happens at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10. It's the Tailpipes and Tacos Christmas Edition, Saturday, December 17th. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show will be there, too. Celebrate the Christmas season with friends and family at Tailpipes and Tacos. Saturday morning, December 17th, 8 to 11. We'll see you then, weather permitting. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is having a car social. Saturday, October 15th, 9 to noon. It's a cruise in like no other. Expect Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches, Corvettes, and Shelby Mustangs. Get social at this first ever event. You'll also see Gulf Coast Auto Shield's private workshop. Questions are welcomed. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is easy to get to at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway near West Airport Boulevard, just south of the Southwest Freeway. Car Social takes place Saturday, October 15th, 9 to noon. Tell your friends, bring your car, and enjoy this rare opportunity to see Houston's finest rides. You'll also learn about nano ceramic coatings, Exo Shield for your windshield, and Expel window tent, among others. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show will be there too. Join us for Car Social at Gulf Coast Auto Shield Saturday, October 15th, 9 to noon at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway. Visit GCAutoShield.com to see the show fly and all the details. 